Hi everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus, and welcome to my very first Mod Spotlight. So for today's Mod Spotlight, I've decided to put the kind of brand new Thermodynamics Mod Spot uh, mod under the spotlight. So why am I doing this? Well. When Thermal Expansion first got released for Minecraft 1.7, uh, it was kind of missing all its traditional flux ducts, item ducts, and fluid ducts. And uh, because of that, many people have moved on to other mods, such as uh, the, I think the main one being Ender.io, just because its conduit system is brilliant. Uh, let me just get rid of those signs, I don't know why they're still there. Yeah, its uh, conduit system is absolutely brilliant. I'm thinking of putting that one under the spotlight soon as well, just because it is a fantastic mod. Uh, I'll show you why, but um, yeah, so most people have been switching over to that because its conduit system is amazing. You can run uh, fluids, items, power, and even ME cables all in the same kind of block space, which is, like, insane. But uh, I'm sure I'll get onto that later. But today, what I'm going to be uh, introducing is thermodynamics. Uh, so reintroducing the... Um, Flux, all, all these kind of like ducks that would would have been expected in the main mod back in as a separate mod. I think it was made by different people as well, from what I remember. So uh, that'd be why. So uh, where are we going to get started? So first of all, what I'm going to be getting, what I'm going to be having a look at is the different kinds of flux ducks. Now, how do we make these? So and how do we make these and what do they do? So we've got the basic leadstone flux duct to start off with. This is made using some redstone, some lead, some glass. And you get six for your recipe, which is quite nice. Uh, these are very basic, only transfer 200 redstone flux per tick. So they don't transfer a whole hell of a lot. So probably what you want to do is that because um, these hardened flux ducts, which transfer 800 redstone flux per tick, aren't too much more expensive as they require just a little bit more redstone and a piece of invar and your leadstone flux ducts that you've already made. So you always get a one-to-one -one trade here. So you need one, like essentially for a hardened flux duct, you need one extra redstone and a piece of invar. I mean, you can make this, uh, so if you have a look at the recipe, you can also make this like individually using invar nuggets, but that is slightly inefficient as that requires essentially a third of an ingot uh, extra on top, I think, something like that. So it's it's more efficient to use this as you get more bang for your buck from your invar. So that's the recipe I would recommend. So with this, you get four times the transfer for just an extra piece of redstone and a small amount of invar, which is quite nice. Now, uh, where we get to next is the redstone flux duct. Now, this is kind of like the the, the bread and butter of uh, kind of like flux ducts for a long time. Um, it transfers 8,000 redstone flux per tick, so it transfers 10 times the amount of redstone flux that a hardened flux duct does. However, it is slightly more complicated to make. So, for example, we're going to require some electrum, some hardened glass uh, to make the empty redstone energy flux ducts. Now, uh, you can't use these to transfer around power, so this is a crafting item. Now, what we're going to want to do is take a piece of that recipe, bring it over to a magma crucible and a fluid transposer. So, what you're going to want to put in here is some, is some redstone. This will get melted down by the magma crucible, get transferred over to the fluid transposer, this will fill up here, and then what we're going to want to do is start putting in these empty redstone flux ducts into here. And this will fill up, and we get the completed ones. So we get some redstone energy flux ducts, which is quite nice. So uh, these are the ones you're probably going to want to use for a while if you decide to go down this mod route. They transfer a very good amount of redstone flux for not too expensive. So electrum and hardened glass isn't too hard to come by. This is just combining uh, gold and silver, which is fairly common. Hardened glass is slightly harder, so this is going to require um, for you go into the recipe so hard you can either use fused quartz as well from ender.io or hardened glass which is some pulverized obsidian and, a and some lead to get yourself some hardened glass so what are we on to next so next one to re resonant flux duct now these resonant flux duct hot transfer around four times the amount of redstone flux as the redstone flux duct and the way we make them is you take your old resistant energy flux ducts. So again, if you're making these, you can probably make these if you can afford to make the Enderium. So um, it's kind of a similar way of upgrading the old, uh, with, these, with this tier, you're kind of doing the same thing here. So you're upgrading your previous ones, so your resistant energy flux ducts into resonant ones. So this, like I said, this transfers around four times the amount of energy of the previous one. And to do that, again, just need a little bit more redstone and some enderium. Now the enderium is probably the hardest part. So the way we make that is uh, in an induction smelter or an alloy smelter. Uh, so it's going to require the same amount of resources. So we, well, the, re the way I'd recommend it is probably with the enderium blend. Yeah, with the enderium blend, which is some um, tin dust, uh, pulverized shiny metal, and some resonant ender. Uh, 
uh, with some pyrothium in an induction smelter. We just set the time to uh, to dawn, so we got a nice bit, a little bit of light, like so. And yeah, because of that little small little upgrade using a little bit of endearium, you get four times the amount of redstone flux transfer. Uh, so finally, the final way of transferring around redstone flux in this mod pack is the cryo stabilized flux duct. Now this is a very expensive um, kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, co conduit to make. So um, it's kind of similar to the pre to the previous tier. So making the redstone flux duct, in which you're going to need to make the kind of the bare the bare minimum of it, and then fill it with something. So to make the cryo stabilized flux duct empty, we're going to need some hardened glass and some electrum. So similar to the uh, redstone energy flux duct, just get rid of them. We are going to need some redstone energy flux ducts. And that'll craft into a cryo-stabilized flux duct. Again, we're going to need a magma crucible and a fluid transposer. Except this time, we're going to need some cryothium dust, uh, which is nice and complicated to make. So let me just show you the recipe. Uh, so you either need to get it from bees, or by crafting together nitre slash saltpeter, uh, redstone, blizz. So you're going to need to find some blizzes somewhere, and a snowball. And that gets you some cryothium dust. And then what we then need to do, put this into the fluid transposer, which will fill it up with gelid cryothium. So this is essentially like a superconductor almost, and what it does is it transfers around infinite redstone flux per tick. So it's essentially instantaneous, and I've actually... Oh no, I don't have it working down here. I thought I wired this up with it, but uh, let me just show you what it looks like. So it's a kind of an interesting one. So, wow, look at that. That is kind of crazy. So let me grab a few more. Let's, ha let's see what they look like in tandem. That looks kind of badass. You can see the kind of the original... Um, flux ducts inside of it kind of surrounded by this pool of jellied cryothium so that's uh that's pretty sweet i like that if you can make them if you've got the resources to make these then why the hell not it transfers around infinite redstone flux per tick but i highly doubt that most people are going to have the resources to actually move this around so let me just put this away for now okay so that is all the power um transfer conduits so the, de the dedicated power transfer conduits we'll get on to other ones to transfer around power later on but these are the dedicated ones so we've gone from all the way from leadstone all the way up to cryo stabilized right so what is next so now we're going to move on to the item ducks um so this is where we're going to start to see standard i think i've clear called it clear from now on but for some reason for this first one i decided to call it standard and opaque but from now on it'll be clear and opaque so item ducks now the way these work in thermodynamics is um so we start off with the basic ones here so we've got item ducts and item ducts opaque now they're very similar in terms of the way they're made so with the clear so with every single clear one we're basically using hardened glass which we've already explained earlier and then for item duct for the basic item ducts we're also going to need some tin now for the opaque version it's exactly the same so tin but we're only using lead as opposed to hardened glass which kind of makes sense so for this we're using like the glassy form of the lead so we're combining it with some obsidian to make a glass but for this because we only need it to be opaque we're just combining it with the bog standard lead and the tin which is quite cool so they're your basic item ducts, probably the ones you're going to use for a long, long time if you use them. Uh, later on, if uh, you if you if you so desire, you can make some of the impulse item ducts. Now, let me just have a look at these. So, if I hold shift for details, so because they're glowstone filled, they travel more rapidly. And the way we make them is, so let me grab one of you and one of you. What we basically need to do is again, we need to put something in the magma crucible. This time, we'll be putting glowstone, and then for the clear ones. We'll fill it up like so, and we get some impulse item ducts like so. And then it's exactly the same for the for the opaque ones. So we'll start filling it up with a bit, little bit of glowstone. Put them in there, and they'll fill up as well. Marvellous. So let me show you what these look like. So we've got the clear, the kind of the clear ones like so, and the opaque ones. So a, they're a bit different. So nice and clear and then we've got that opaque with the kind of the yellow line to show that it is now an impulse one which is quite cool right so they're very slightly faster than them if you can afford the extra glowstone so not really too expensive to upgrade your bog standard item ducks into impulse ones just for a small amount of glowstone which is obviously is really common in the end and the end the nether even what am i on about but if you can afford it why not make warp item ducks so um, the way we make these is we take some old item ducts and combine it with some endarium. Instead, we get warp item ducts, and they look a lot like this. Now, on their own, they already transfer items much faster than these impulse item ducts. 
fair enough. We've obviously we've obviously upgraded them. But if you take some an RF source such as this creative energy cell and power it, they they go all funky like this, and you can obviously see the uh, what looks like the end there. So that's the clear one. The the uh, the opaque one is exactly the same. So it's just um, the opaque item ducts with the endirium, and we'll show you what it looks like here as well so it looks fairly similar from what i remember so they are powered but so the opaque one obviously you can see this really cool effect where it's like looking into like the infinite abyss this one you can't really tell apart from looking at uh the i think it's what the whaler interface to say that it's got 2400 redstone flux per tick powering it up so what this does now is it's his instantaneously transported items so if i put cobblestone in there and get myself a servo uh let me grab some Resonant servos, like so. Put a servo in there. Okay, to send. Instantaneous send. Look at that, that's really cool. So if I put it in there, bop, it's already in here. One stack, all at once, directly into the chest. How cool is that? So just wanted to demonstrate how that worked. So if you can power this up using your Redstone Flux network, so just powering it with a cable, it doesn't have to be an energy cell. I've just used a creative energy cell just for demonstrative purposes today. Uh, so yeah, that is uh, how the way the warp item docks work. So it's pretty cool. So if you can afford that little bit of endirium, you can essentially uh, then get your item zipping around instantaneously, which is quite nice. Finally, we're going to be coming on to the fluctuating item docks. Now, similarly to... No, what am I about? Uh, not similarly to anything. So this is a new type of uh, item duct introduced into thermodynamics. And basically, this is a multi-purpose item duct. So it does two things at once. It transfers items and it transfers redstone flux, which is quite nice. So what we're going to do is I'll show you how to make them in a second. So let me go back and grab an extra one of you and an extra one of you. I knew there's a reason why I put uh, three recipes in there. So you grab your bog standard item ducts so either opaque or clear you drop them in a magma crucible uh, sorry not a magma crucible uh, a so you, obviously we need to melt down some redstone again using the magma crucible we then fill them up using the fluid transposer and we get fluctuating item ducts very nice do the same thing with the opaque ones um, so as you can see now it also transfers items and it transfers redstone flux and it can transfer up to 2000 redstone flux per tick so it's somewhere in between um, a redstone energy flux duct which is probably cheaper than this so basically you could use this as an intermediary you don't even have to use it as uh, as an item duct you can simply just use it as an intermediate intermediary between making hardened flux ducts and redstone energy flux ducts as it is considerably cheaper considering that all you require oops daisy to make it is some tin and some lead and you get yourself a um something that can transfer around two and a half times the amount of harden of redstone flux that a hardened flux duct can which is quite nice so here we go so this is what it looks like so that's the uh that's the standard one and then we have the clear one so nice difference right and let me just show you how this works so what i can also do to demonstrate it working so we can first of all power up the system so you can see it's holding redstone flux redstone flux now so what i can also do is put blue on there show this charging up so as you can see it is transferring redstone flux from the creative energy cell into this resonant energy cell plus i can also show you transferring items so i'll put something in there activate the servo so set that to disabled it will turn on and it should in theory start transferring things which it did which is quite nice so it transferred it so that's really cool right so that is all the item ducts i've showed you how they've worked so now what we can do is move on to the fluid ducts now there's three tier of fluid ducts um well three not really three tiers there's two tiers of fluid ducts and a um and a and a, and a flux plated one similar to the fluctuating item ducts right so where, where are we going to get started on this so the thermal fluid duct the basic fluid duct is either some copper over glass so this is probably this is very slightly cheaper you don't need hardened glass for a temperate fluid duct you just need some copper and a piece of glass or for a thermal fluid duct opaque you need copper and a piece of lead so that's very slightly more expensive depending on your opinion um but so these two are basically identical except one's clear and one's not now the reason that you'd want to upgrade from say a thermal fluid duct up to the next tier such as the hardened fluid duct which is very slightly more expensive so we require invar and hardened glass for the clear one 
and invar and lead for the hardened one is let me demonstrate what happens when you use these temperate fluid ducts with something such as let me just set it to dawn quick so in here in these tanks i've got pyrothium and cryothium now these are the hottest and coldest materials of uh, kind of not materials fluids so these pipes basically transfer around fluids faster faster or slower depending on what the fluid is. Now, for these particular fluids, because they're at the very extremes of temperature, what's going to happen is if I decide to use this particular fluid duct to transfer around this blazing pyrothium, for example, let me show you what happens. So I'm going to give it a second. So I've just turned on the servo there to pump out the fluid. And eventually, it's going to go. So if you use this to transfer around a lot of this, Oh, bloody hell, let me jump. Ah, it's going to go bang. So, as you can see, um, that scared the crap out of me. I was I was expecting it, and it still made me jump, which was uh, weird. So, as you can see, it blew up the uh, blew up the thermal fluid duct. Same thing is going to happen with the cryothium one. So, um, this will happen again. So, let me show you. Oh, Jesus Christ, that still made me jump. What the hell? <laughs> Oh, I, I, have, I have no idea. That I don't know why that made me jump. But uh, if we use the hardened, um, well, hardened fluid duct, there we go. That's what we're looking for. So let me grab some hardened fluid ducts. Here we go. I'm just going to put a servo on either side. There we go. Just so I can transfer this back. So these are our hardened fluid ducts. Da, da, da. Disable that. This is what you need to basically transfer around these really, really hot or cold fluids um, without them breaking. So that's why you'd want to upgrade from the bog standard fluid ducts to these kind of hardened ones. Um, what I'm looking for. Is that going in? That doesn't seem to be going in. That's really weird. Is that because there's a... Uh, that's really bizarre. Is that because there's a servo in there? Yeah, that's because there's a servo in there. Very weird. Um, oops, a daisy. So yeah, I think it's because I'm doing that. Um, I think, oh right, yeah. If I just wrench that out, it it just pulls out the servo without actually just dis destroying the pipe as well. That would make more sense. So let me pop out that servo. So yeah, these should transfer this entire tank now without blowing up. So as you can see, and also it's transferring around the fluids a lot faster as well by the looks of things. So as you can see, it's not blowing up, which is good. That's why you'd want to go from temperate to hardened fluid ducts. Right. Apparently there's a servo there as well. Finally, we get the flux plated fluid ducts. Now, these are basically very similar to the um, resonating item ducts, as I said earlier. So you can transfer around fluids and you can transfer around RF. So let me just demonstrate this. So grab the creative energy cell. As you can see, there's now RF in that um, in there. We also need to change the configuration so that can now start accepting RF, which it is. And then we can also show it transferring our fluids at the same time. So we'll disable that. And we've got lava going from that tank into that tank. Very nice. So um, this is, I think, so the recipe for this is, so let me have a quick look. It is the hardened fluid duct, so it will transfer around any fluid similar to this one. And then to upgrade it, what we need is a small amount of signalium and a small amount of, of electrum. So signalium you get from uh, combining um, destabilized redstone, copper and silver dust and you get signalium blend you then just smelt that up and you get signalium ingots thus you get signalium nuggets so nice and straightforward same with the opaque one you just would use the opaque fluid uh, hardened fluid duct so yeah that's fluid ducts out of the way right here we come to probably one of the biggest changes for this particular mod pack so whereas in the past um you used to be able to control all of these kind of uh, ducts using servos uh, but it was just one servo the pneumatic servo and what thermodynamics has basically done is broken down that pneumatic servo into three different components so now we have the servo which i'll go through in a second uh, no uh, let's go through it now we'll go we'll go through it stage by stage so the first things first is the servo what this servo does is this is what pulls things out so say so as i've shown you earlier with things such as like item ducts and fluid ducts i've just been using the the, the highest tier one the resonate resonance servo this is what pull things out so to pull things out all you need to do is basically go into this redstone control and just hit ignore and basically what that'll do is it'll switch it on it'll go from off the little arrow will go red and it'll start pulling things out of the inventory. So if I had another inventory attached here, it would start pulling things out of this one. And to make this servo, it's nice and straightforward. It's some iron, some redstone, 
an iron nugget and some glass and you get the servo now why would you upgrade to the other tiers of servos i'll show you in a second so so this particular servo is very basic the only thing um so what you can basically do is you can only pull out three different items from an inventory so I'd have to specify, I can only specify what I want to either blacklist or whitelist, for example. So it'll only pull out certain things. Now, um, if I want to pull out more than three things, then I'm obviously going to want to upgrade to the hardened servo. So the hardened servo, we make this using Invar, Iron Nuggets, Glass and Redstone. What that gives us is twice as many items that we can pull out. We can still do the whitelist and the blacklist, but what we can also do now is use metadata so for example if we only wanted to pull out good pickaxes or bad pickaxes we can either tell it to do so or ignore which is quite nice so you basically with all of these servos and all of the um, filters and the retrievers is that as you go up through these tiers um, you get more items that you can pull out or filter or whatever so you get more inventory slots and you get more options to use so we also get an increased stack size so this has a maximum stack size of four that it can pull out this one has a maximum stack size of 16. The reinforced servo, we get even more options. So we get nine different items that we can filter out. We get uh, 64. So this is basically um, the best you can get in terms of options and also stack size. So this will pull out a full stack. So the reinforced server will pull out a full stack at a time. It can use, um, I'm not sure what MBT stands for again. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, oh, I, I I really can't remember. If I remember, I will put up a little annotation. But you get all the options. So you've got use metadata. You've got whitelist and blacklisting. You can ignore the ore dictionary. So you can only pull out certain um, kind of ores. So for example, you've got like copper ore from different mods. So you can use your use the ore dictionary, which will basically pull out any kind of copper ore, or ignore the ore dictionary. So I only pull out one type of copper ore from such as thermal expansion, or maybe such as industrial craft, which is quite nice. Also, you can choose it to use mod owner or ignore mod owner. So, I'm, I'm fairly sure you can pull out items of certain mods um, or not. And then finally, we've got nearest first, furthest first, random, round robin. So, this is basically um, where you start to get to... So, if you've got like complex systems where you want to put pull something out of say like a furnace where you've smelted uh, some charcoal and you want to put it into like a nearest kind of a generator first a furthest generator first a random generator or round robin would be my preferable thing if you've got multiple generators that you want to put charcoal in you can do so which is quite nice so this is the reinforced servo which requires electrum hardened glass so this is where it changes from glass to hardened glass still iron nuggets and some redstone this is basically your the one which will give you the ma maximum stack size and all of the options so you can basically stop here if you want to or if you've got the resources you can make the signalium which is exactly the same as the previous one but just requires signalium as opposed to electrum or enderium which requires enderium as opposed to signalium um so um the difference between this this and this so the only difference so they've got all exactly the same uh filter options and uh fluids and stuff like that so um it'll do all the, all the same things but the reason to upgrade to these ones is basically just speed. So as you can see, the extraction rate here is one second. Here is half a second. Here is still half a second. Um, and then if we have a look across here, we also get fluid extraction rate is 100% here, 150% here, and 200% here. And then what you can also see is that these also get a speed boost. So they'll speed items or fluid along faster through the network than, say, the reinforced servo. So that is why you'd want to upgrade to Signalium or Enderium servos. Did I do anything around the back here? Nope, I did not. I was just checking. I couldn't remember if I set up something. Next, we get onto the filters. So, whereas before you used to be able to use the pneumatic servo to filter and extract, what you need to do now is that if you want to filter something at a source, you need to use a separate filter. So, this you'd have something pulling out of the machine. This you'd have something at a source machine, which you'd want to filter out. Very similar to the um, servos in which it require it's basically exactly the same recipe so for example we see all the way back here we've got iron nuggets glass iron and redstone the only difference between the servo and the filter is that you use paper instead so as if we work along it's exactly the same invar electrum and then replacing hardened glass at the reinforced level uh, signalium 
anandirium and then you're just replacing that little piece of redstone with a piece of paper which allows you to filter so again as you work through we go from just whitelist and blacklist with three items uh, metadata six items all the options nine items and infinite stack sizes so uh, decrease max total items in inventory which is fairly cool i'm not sure what that really does but uh can use that now so increase max total items in inventory i'm not entirely sure what that does or not but um i'll have to look that up but i think that just controls um I think that's infinite i think you can then control um control the amount of items that you're putting into the inventory let me just turn it to daytime um and yeah so and then also again with the filter do you get some other bonuses as well so uh i think it's so there's not really any difference between the signalium and the resonant filter apart from it's just in the um is there like a maximum thing we can put in here i don't know if there's a difference between the so I don't see why you'd want to make an Enderium filter. I think the only difference would be the, the amount of items. So the only difference between Signalium and Enderium is simply the amount of items in this case. Whereas there's a distinct difference between the Signalium and the Enderium servo in terms of its speed, the only difference between these two is the items. So the only way you'd ever want to upgrade to this one is if you need to be able to sort uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15 items at once as opposed to 12. So there we go. Finally we go on to the retriever now um the retriever is a bit different so whereas the servo pulls things out of an inventory the filter determines what can go into an inventory the retriever actually pulls things towards an inventory so it's very similar again in terms of its recipe but what we've got instead of redstone or the paper is an eye vendor and instead of iron nuggets we've got enderium nuggets but apart from that it's basically the very similar pattern so we've got iron for the retriever invar for the hardened retriever Hardened glass and electrum for the reinforced retriever, signalium um, for the signalium retriever, and enderium for the enderium retriever. Is in court? No, it's resonant retriever. What am I on about? That's resonant retriever. My bad. Uh, that's just me kind of going, oh, it's enderium. It must be the same as signalium. Sorry, sorry, it's resonant retriever. Uh, I could rename that, but uh, you get the point. So I think they're all resonant. Yeah, they're all resonant servos. I've called them enderium for some stupid reason. Ignore me. They're called resonant uh servos filters and retrievers um so the way these work so if we show i've got a little demonstrative purpose here so we've got an empty inventory here we've got a full inventory here full of iron ingots and then basically so say for example i want this to pull certain items into this particular inventory i can get my retriever here turn it off and it will pull it should in theory pull the iron into here through the item ducts which is quite nice so there we go so it's pulled things from there into here so it's pulled a stack out so say for example we wanted multiple stacks of things so let me grab some cobblestone let me grab like a load of it oops so daisy i did not mean to give myself in infinite i wanted to give myself like a load of it like so so this will pull out a stack at once as you can see it's kind of pulling out a stack at once and transporting them fairly quickly into this into this one which is quite nice that is how the retriever works so say for example i've got a chest somewhere um that i've kind of been using to dump things and i want to pull items out of that chest into another particular inventory i can just stick a retriever on there and it'll go whoosh straight into that inventory and i can find it much easier so they are the retrievers so uh you've got the three kind of tiers so that that sends things that filters things and that retrieves things very nice so the final part of thermal dynamics is a structural duct so say we want to hide these ugly ugly things out of the way how are we going to do that we'll use a structural duct so the way we make this structural duct is with some iron nuggets and some lead and we get the structural ducts like so so how do, how do these work so say for example i wanted to uh let me grab a pickaxe quick oops a daisy so go grab an iron pickaxe say i wanted to actually hide these uh item ducts in this wall here so i want these item ducts to run through this wall like so but I don't want. But I want to keep it as a nice-looking wall. What am I going to do? I'm going to grab some of these structural ducts, create some cobblestone, like uh, combine it with some cobblestone to make co make these covers covers from thermodynamics. And what I can then do is cover them up nicely, like so. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. You couldn't even tell it was there, and it just looks like a cobblestone cover. So we can use it to cover up our um, 
What's the one looking for? Uh, item fr- uh, not item frames. Uh, our ducks, which is quite nice. Does it work for any other mods? Let me just have a quick look at conduits. So, for example, if I wanted item conduits from uh, Ender.io, can I use these? No. So they only work on um, thermal expansion ducts. So you can only put them around. So basically, when you wrench it up, it wrenches up the uh, item duct or the particular duct that it's attached to and all of its frames as well so you can only use these these particular covers on thermal dynamics uh, ducts so yeah i think that's been a fairly good rundown of the mod mod we've gone through everything i showed you how it's all worked how to create them all um so yeah that's been a fairly successful first mod spotlight so um I'm going to leave the episode here for now. As always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode, especially if you want to see more. Don't forget to let me know in the comments. Um, Also, let me know what kind of mods you'd be interested in seeing a mod spotlight for, as I will be looking to possibly do one of these a week, which would be quite good. They are quite intensive to set up, as you do have to go through and make sure that you've got all the recipes, uh, displaying all of the different things, showing what they all look like and stuff like that. Uh, so it's quite intensive so i'm going to try and do these one a week uh depending on what what the mod is and how intensive it is to set up so we'll see um also if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button it's always nice to see you guys uh, hitting that hitting that button and showing me some support uh but apart from that thanks for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye